Welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson. Thank you, Nikki and Mary, for that beautiful prelude. My name is Josh Fitzpatrick. I'm one of the associate pastors here at the church, and it is my privilege today to fill in for Dr. Clayton Oliphant, who is performing his daughter Katie's wedding this weekend, and so we get to celebrate with the Oliphant family today. I thank you for joining us. If you would please register your attendance, you'll see a link on your screen to do so. And today is the first Sunday of the season of Advent, something we'll talk about a little bit more in just a bit, but now is the time when we get to light our Advent wreath. Good morning. I'm Doopy. And I'm Sherry Depew. Thank you for joining us as we light the first candle on the Advent wreath. On this first Sunday of Advent, as people of hope, we anticipate and prepare for the coming of the Christ child, Emmanuel, God with us. We light this candle as a sign of our hope. We recognize that God is among us and meets us even in the darkness and the messiness of our world. In our homes we wait. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Let this light be the guide as we wait for the Christ child to remind us how to live in the light of hope. season and was so beautifully sung. As we enter into a time of prayer, I want to draw your attention to the webpage fumcr.com pray. We are a praying church 
And I invite you throughout the course of this week to pull up the full prayer list that is available on that page and pray over it. I also encourage you to submit your own prayer requests so that we might be in prayer for you. Will you join your hearts with mine as we go to God in prayer? Come, Lord Jesus, come. Through the frustration, the isolation, and the heartbreak of this year. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Through the uncertainty, the questions, and the anxiety that this pandemic has brought. In eager expectation, we wait. Oh, we long for your coming. Come, oh come, Emmanuel. We lift up a special prayer for those who wait this day. Those who wait for healing from COVID-19, cancer, and other illnesses. Those who wait for an end to violence. Those who wait for employment. Those who wait for the next meal. And those who wait for a sense of normalcy. In the waiting of this season, we pray that we may listen to your voice. We pray that we may let you in. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Enter into our hearts. Pour out your healing presence. Fill us with joy. Flood us with your hope. Surround us with your peace. Come, Lord Jesus, come and be born anew in us. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we enter into a time of offering, I want to say thank you for your faithful giving, especially throughout this pandemic. I want to invite you to now generously give of your tithes and offerings to continue to support the mission and ministry of FUMCR. During the season of Advent, we have a special offering that will go towards network and the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Network continues to provide meals, housing, and other resources for those in our community who desperately need it. And the United Methodist Committee on Relief is providing assistance for those recovering from wildfires and hurricanes. You may give by going online, by texting an amount to the number on your screen, or by mailing a check to the church. And you will see online a special drop-down option for the Advent offering, or you can mention it in the memo line of your check. Let us now generously give of our tithes and offerings as we continue in worship with the next song. Sing Noel, sing Noel.
Natalie Ninovich, Associate Children's Director, and welcome to Children's Time. You know, this is one of my favorite times of year because we begin to get the decorations out of the attic and we begin to do our traditions and celebrations to prepare for baby Jesus's birth. And this week, I was thinking about some of my favorite family traditions that we have at my house. We bake cookies, we have game nights, we collect Christmas books, all sorts of things. But my most favorite tradition began a very long time ago. My grandma decided when I was just a baby that she would start giving each of the grandkids their very own Christmas ornament each year to add to the tree. So this is one of my first ornaments that I got when I was really, really tiny. And she continued the tradition year after year, giving us something special each year to remind us of that Christmas. And so then when I had Thomas and my own family, I continued with that tradition. And so I would give Thomas something that he was into or something he really enjoyed, maybe a sport um, or an activity. And sometimes we would even get an ornament when we would travel somewhere during the year. And so we have a tradition where we go and we get a live Christmas tree and we bring it home and we have snacks for dinner and we turn on a Christmas movie and we spend time together unwrapping each one of these special ornaments. And we talk about the ornament and remember where we got the ornament or what year we got the ornament and we hang those ornaments on the Christmas tree. And then at the very end, Thomas gets on Corey's shoulders and he puts the star on top of the Christmas tree and we take a family selfie in front of that tree. And that is some of our favorite family time together during this season. So as we go into this preparation for Christmas, I want you to think about what are your favorite family traditions that you have at your house? And if you don't have any, what is something that you would like to do together? How can you spend this Christmas time at home together with family traditions? So tonight when you're having conversation at the dinner table, talk about what are some of your favorite traditions and what are some things that you can begin to do as a family to celebrate the hope, joy, peace, and love of the Christmas season. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for our families and thank you for the traditions that we get to do to celebrate during the Christmas season. Help us to love our old traditions and begin some new special traditions. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Hi, this is Bill Rivers and this is my wife, Becky. And we're <laughs> excited about celebrating this year. We've been members of FUMCR since 1971. And this year we will celebrate in our home with our family like we have for the last 49 years. We have a special addition this year at our tree, our great grandson, Rivers Masterson. We will not go to church Christmas Eve this year. We'll, we'll watch our service on television. And then when the chants are choir, which I'm a member, sing Silent Night, we'll all lift our candles high and quietly sing together. We wish all of you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. COVID has changed a lot of things this year. And as our family looks forward to the Christmas season, we know things won't be the same as in years past. Christmas Eve will definitely be different. When I was a kid growing up in Southern California, my family had a tradition. We'd go to Christmas Eve services at our local Methodist church, followed by a nice dinner out. This is a tradition that I continue with Liz and my daughters today. Although everyone enjoys this tradition, it does make for a hectic Christmas Eve. Trying to time the dinner reservations to coincide with the ending of the Christmas Eve service navigating through a crazy parking lot, rushing over to the restaurant. So although we don't know exactly how Christmas Eve will play out this year, we do know that for our family, there won't be any rushing from a busy church service to a crowded restaurant. 
Yes, Christmas Eve will be different. A little less hectic, a little more quiet, a welcome change for our family. Hi, we're the Devlins. I'm Aaron, this is Courtney. What I'm most excited about being home this Christmas and spending more time at home um, is doing more things in the community, being more service oriented. We went to church this morning and the sermon was about service as it relates to leadership. And so I would like to kind of step up my leadership game, do more for the community. Um, if that means doing it through the church, that's, that's great in my neighborhood. And of course, with my lovely, lovely family. So that's what I'm, uh, I'm most excited about having, having more time to do things for other people. Absolutely. And I think what I'm most excited about spending more uh, time at home this Christmas is really in the years past, I've had to travel a lot uh, this season, um, fall and winter season, which um, is fun in some aspects, but doesn't allow me to really spend as much time with my family and at home. So now that I won't be traveling or even at the office, I'm working from home, I'll be able to do spontaneous things like make cookies with my boys or go for a walk with the family um, and being able to have that flexibility. Um, and we just are excited to spend more time together. I know you just can't get enough. That's right. What excites me most about Christmas this year is that we are being forced to slow down. We will have more time to just enjoy the spirit and joy of Christmas. I am particularly looking forward to enjoying the magic of Christmas through the eyes of my grandchildren. Hi, we're the Kilgards. It's my wife, Jean. I'm Mike. This is my daughter, Emily. This year, it was really exciting and new to get to put up our Christmas tree early, uh, just because we really have nothing better to do in 2020. So it was super exciting uh, to decorate the house for Christmas extra early this year. I'm really excited about this year because this is Emmy's last year before she heads off to college. So we're gonna to get to spend a lot more time at home baking and cooking together. Um, some exciting recipes that we've never tried before for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I'm excited because my favorite part of Christmas is actually the day after Christmas. There's not that much happening. This year will be like that the whole week long. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. everyone. We're the Beckett family. I'm Danny. And I'm Archie. And we're here with our four grandchildren who live close by. This Christmas we are fortunate to share the Advent season with them and their families. We will focus on the presence of family love rather than the presence under the tree. Each week of Advent we will highlight the importance of our anticipation of the birth of Jesus by keeping Christmas Christ-centered. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas everyone. everyone! Today's scripture lesson comes from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. A shoot shall come from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy at all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you, Dan, for reading our scripture today. So it is the first Sunday in the season of Advent, something that you have experienced in the service so far. And I know that for some of us, Advent is something with which we are very familiar. It's a, it's a tradition that we look forward to every year. And, and I also recognize today that more than maybe ever before, we have people joining us online who are less familiar with the traditions of the church. And so I just want to briefly explain that that Advent is the season that leads up to Christmas. It's the four Sundays that lead us to the birth of Jesus Christ. And in Western Christianity, we follow what's called a, a liturgical calendar or the, the Christian year, kind of like maybe in your business, you would have a, a fiscal year. We, we have a church calendar that's slightly different than, uh, than our regular January through December calendar. And the season of Advent is the beginning of the church year. So on one hand, we might say, Happy New Year. It is the beginning of the church year. Now, during the season of Advent, we anticipate the arrival of Christ. And we do that in three ways. We do that, one, by anticipating the birth of Jesus Christ. We do that, secondly, by anticipating the arrival of Jesus into our own lives and into our own hearts. And we do that, thirdly, by anticipating the second coming of Christ, as foretold by Jesus himself and as and is witnessed throughout Scripture. And so it's during this season of Advent that we are we're excited. We, we're anticipating this, this arrival as it leads us to Christmas Day. Now, I don't know about you, but, but in my family, the excitement and the anticipation is real. It, it's thick. It's palpable. I've got three kids that are, who are running around the house who cannot wait for it to be Christmas morning. And so this is what we do. This is the season of Advent, the season of anticipation. Now, it's also during the season of Advent that many of us participate in, in traditions. And so if your family is anything like mine, as, as I was growing up, we had many different traditions during the season of Advent, many different Christmas traditions. I've, I've told you about on different occasions in the past that that my family would sometimes go and, and cut down our very own Christmas tree. We'd tromp through the snow and find the perfect tree and cut it down and, and haul it on top of our Volkswagen van again and pull it home and, and try to fit it in the perfect spot in our house. We also got our pictures taken with Santa Claus on the seventh floor of Macy's in San Francisco every single year. It was a, a dear, precious tradition in my family that started way before I was born. I'm the, the youngest of four kids, and you can follow the pictures that are on my, my mom's mantle every single year as the Fitzpatrick family grows, and then on after we become adults, and we begin to bring fiancés and then spouses into the family Santa picture. It was a, a sacred tradition of the Fitzpatricks, if you will. Also on that trip, after we'd take our Santa picture, we'd go and we'd pick out an ornament. And so every year we have a different ornament that is, it's kind of neat to follow because now I have a box of ornaments from my childhood with my initials, JMF, and the year written on a Sharpie. And it, it's fun to see the, the transitions in, in maturity, if you will, from the different things that I was into based on the, the traditions and the, the ornaments that you can see as they progress over the years. And then one of my favorite traditions was the Advent calendar. So this was a, a felt tree, Christmas tree-shaped felt with pockets, 25, 24 pockets, one for each day in the, the month of December leading to Christmas. And my mom would, would hand wrap tiny little gifts and place them in each of these pockets. And so it was the most exciting thing in the world as a kid to wake up every morning in the month of December and run to our advent calendar to grab one of those gifts and to open it up and see what we got that day. And, and then as each day progressed, you could see as you get closer and closer to Christmas morning, all a part of this sense of, of anticipation as the season of Advent leads us to Christmas morning. Now today, as the first Sunday in the season of Advent, we're going to be talking about a Christmas tradition that is founded in Scripture, and that is the tradition that, that many people have participated in historically, the tradition of having a, a Jesse tree. Now if you're unfamiliar with a Jesse tree, it's very similar to an Advent calendar in that it helps you count down the days or count the days toward Christmas morning. Unlike an advent calendar where you take things out of the pockets, on a Jesse tree, you add ornaments to the tree. And so each ornament tells a, a different story. And it comes to us straight from this scripture that we just heard read in Isaiah chapter 11. So if you recall, Jesse 
was the father of David. That begins this lineage that leads us to Jesus, the Messiah, the one whose birth we celebrate on Christmas morning. And and so as we look at what a Jesse tree is, it really begins to paint the picture of this, this family tree of Jesus with each ornament telling a different story. And I love this passage in Isaiah chapter 11. I love the, the imagery that's used as it tells us about the foundations of the Messiah and it, and it prophesies of the one who is to come. You see here, it talks about the shoot that shall come out of the stump of Jesse, referring to Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, this branch that shall grow out of the roots. And then we have imagery here as there's a promise of this Prince of Peace, this one who will come to change the world where there's the wolf that lies down with the lamb. There's the leopard that lies down with the kid. There is the child that is near the cobra or the adder or the asp. These images that are extremely dangerous and yet through the Prince of Peace, through the peace of God that, that surpasses all understanding, we see that God is doing something new in the world and ushering peace into a divided world. But it all starts with this image of a stump, of something that appears to be dead. And yet when we look at this stump, we recognize that underneath the stump, there are roots that are nourishing the stump to a peace, to a place where it is so nourished that even a branch can begin to sprout from what appears to be dead. This passage reminds us that we serve a God of redemption, a God who can bring new life out of death, a God in whom we can place our hope. I think another reason that I love this passage so much is because it's so appropriate for the year 2020 isn't it? I mean, how many times have you looked around and it just seems like, like 2020 is just a giant stump? I, I mean, in January and February, we had this beautiful tree growing and all of this optimism and all of this hope. And then in March, it's like somebody just came and took an axe and just completely cut down that tree and we are left with this stump, aren't we? And yet over and over, over the course of this year, I've been reminded that even as something appears to be dead and past its prime and, and like there's no hope left, that God is the God of promise and of hope and of redemption. And out of that stump, there are glimmers of new growth and of new life. It's kind of like any, any comeback story. I think one of the reasons I love sports movies so much is because I love those comeback stories. You know, the ones I'm talking about where, where there's a, this individual or there's this team and it just seems like they're up against all odds. Everybody has already counted them out. And yet somehow, deep within them, they find this, this motivation and, and, and skill and, and maybe it's a miracle, but somehow they come back against all odds to, to win and to defeat their enemy. And, and it makes you want to cheer even more because the comeback is that much greater. Uh, to be frank, I've always wanted to be a coach of, of one of those teams, but I wanted that to be, to be my story as I watch those, those comeback movies that Hollywood produces, I find myself wanting to live that story. It, I recently had my first official experience in coaching, to be honest, and uh, I think it went, it went pretty well. I had the privilege this past soccer season of being the head coach, yes, the head coach of the rainbow unicorns. Yes, you heard me right. The rainbow unicorns, this was the pre-K girls, so four and five-year-old girls soccer team, and it was amazing. I mean, I kid you not, this was one of the most fun experiences of my life. Take, take a look at this short little video clip. This gives you an idea of, of what the rainbow unicorn uh, practices look like. And I, I did not plan this, but it seemed like every game we were setting ourselves up 
for the perfect comeback story, like a, like a perfectly scripted story straight out of Hollywood. It would seem like every single game, by the time halftime came, we were, we were down by like 10 goals and, and I would get the team together and, and give this really inspiring speech and, and then we'd go back out on the field. It was, it was like you could not script a better comeback story than we had week after week. The problem was we never quite made it to the second half of the comeback story where you're actually supposed to, to come back and win the game, but, but we'll save that for a, another day. But when we looked at the season, we could say, well, yeah, we kind of got used to, to the stump, if you will. And yet, as used to the stump as we got, the, the branch, the new life, the hope, if you will, that came out of those massive defeats was not the comeback in points to win the game, but but it was the opportunity I had to look at my daughter's smile on her face and just know that she was having the time of her life or to hear her on the drive back home after the game tell me, and I kid you not, tell me that God told her heart that he was proud of her, that she played great. I mean, come on. If that doesn't get you in the feels, then, then I don't know what will. I mean, that, that's almost enough to make me get a unicorn tattoo. I mean, that was, okay, not really on the tattoo thing. But, but you get this. You get this. We experienced defeat over and over. And yet, in the midst of that defeat, there was just this glimmer of, of hope and of new life. And if I look back over the course of the year 2020, there are so many stumps all around us over and over. We can look at our circumstances and just stare at the stump, this stump that appears to be to be dead and it appears to just be over with. And yet we are reminded that we serve a God of redemption who brings hope and new life out of the things that we've already given up on, don't we? And thank goodness, that's the truth. If we're honest with ourselves, this year's Advent is going to look drastically different than maybe any other Advent we've ever experienced. And you and I have the opportunity to make a decision to just count it as a loss already. To just say, I already know that's just going to be a stump. Or we have the opportunity to look at what God is doing new in our lives to look for the little glimmers of hope, the little branches that are sprouting from what we've already given up on, to allow God the opportunity to surprise us with new life because of the roots that are growing deep beneath what we could even imagine or see. In this Advent season, I encourage you to remember the phrase that we said early on in the pandemic that hope is not canceled. And yes, although we might bring new meaning to the words home for Christmas this year, that does not mean that this Christmas has to be a stump. It is my prayer that you and I would have our our eyes open to the work of God all around us and that we could begin living in to the hope that is Jesus the Messiah here and today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Come thou long expected Jesus. That is what the season of Advent is all about as we anticipate the arrival of our Savior. Hey, I want to thank you again for joining us for worship today. If you have any questions about what you've experienced in today's service, if you have questions about joining our church, or if you've made the decision and you want to officially become a member of this wonderful church family, would you email us at join at fumcr.com. Now, would you receive this benediction? May the God who created you and knows you better than you know yourself remind you of your sacred worth as a child of God. And as you look around and see the stumps in your own life this Advent season, may God open your eyes to the branches of hope that are growing from within the midst of those. Amen? Amen. Go in peace and have a great, great week.